So anyway, the body of the holder inside here, which is part, of, which also is part of the stem, it's all one piece. That's a mold of the last one component. It's it's hard. I mean, it's gonna it's gonna feel hard like that, but it, it has a little bit of a flex to it, and you need that because that's it, this, the flexing of that shaft is how you tilt it. Yes. That's the collimation. So. Uh, when you turn these screws in, they press against the back of that clutch disc. That, that, it, these screws are not digging right into the back of the holder. They're digging into it. I mean, it's pressing into a clutch disc. Yes. And that's what allows you to um, still have, you know, you can still rotate it independently without scarring. I mean, you're not you're not dragging you guys, these things. Uh, hi, you guys are out of Worthington, aren't so, you? Yes. We yes, are. we are. Did you drive yesterday? I'm out so of Worthington. So that's... Yeah, uh, we drove. But how much play do you got to move this back and forth? Like, well, you know... To move it, well, we got all No, no, no. Like, in and out. Because if I don't get it it's centered about exactly... Half, about a half an inch. Okay. So if you can measure with an eighth of an inch accuracy, you're going to be okay. What I tell people to do is I tell them to set it with a gap about like that, maybe three sixteenths of an inch, uh -huh. gap, something like that, and then just measure by eye, measure from the center, the center of the thing, yeah, yeah. About the, you, you don't need great precision, just, I just want to roll it like that. That's why I said, like, if you got a good enough travel, yeah, you don't need to. <laughs> you, you don't need to be that accurate, so I, what I actually do is I line, I line this screw up with the vein, and I just lay a ruler right across there, right to the mid, because this, this is right along the midpoint, that's at the midpoint, yeah. and I just eye it from the log, I eye it from the log to that, and then, you know, that's where you then drill your hole. Uh, yeah, yeah. And it's, and it's usually close enough. But if you don't want to use the shroud, you glue the secondary to the shroud. You can, if you don't want to... I, I recommend yeah, using the shroud, uh, but there's some people that can't. Like if you're using like an imported mirror or yes. some odd size well, mirror. Be better uh, well, well, good for you. I just yeah. wondered. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think it'd be that way. Yeah, see, so if, if you if you got an oversized mirror, then you would yeah, do away with that, and then you would glue it on. Wait, 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 wait. So this piece right here that's angled is is the same part yeah. as that center shift. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's all one piece. And you have that molded. Yeah, it's all. All just one mold or piece, one mold. It's, it's not, sometimes people think you can like thre unthread that center stem out yes. of that, but it's all one piece. Uh, uh, I got you. But, uh, That's your New Jersey taxes at work. Well, yeah, this, this, is, uh, yeah. this is one of the custom made. Uh, this is one of the custom-made models, you know, meaning this is made for someone's specific tube size, whereas the one that's in there, that's pre-packaged, or this is meant for the common, like the common Orion, well, Orion, me, Celestron, whatever, they're all made, they're all made in China by the same company. Yeah, I know. A couple of them. So what's the thread size on here, like a 10 or 8? That's an 8, number 832. Yeah. It's a number 1024, although probably within the next year we're going to commonize all these to be Okay. Now, do you put, how is this built? Do you put it like a shaft that's threaded or do you build that? Because I remember you said something about it last year. Yeah, there's a... Uh, you know, we made them so that they're retrofit for the original it, This is actually something that's improved over the last 17 years, because originally, originally, it, it, originally it worked fine, but it was a bear to manufacture. Yeah, that's what you were saying last year. It's like, oh, you don't know how hard that is. Yeah. What, what, what we do now is, is um, they're, they're brass threaded inserts. Yes. So we mold it without the threads, and these are pressed, pressed in. Okay. And you know, they're in pretty good. So you can get nice, smooth threads. Whereas before, originally, up until maybe 10 or 11 years ago, we would put some stainless steel, what they call helicoils or thread inserts in there. They were nice and strong, but you had to run a tap in and out of there for five minutes to get cleaned out. So that flat and you know that the plastic would totally take over the thread. Does that go all the way through, or is that just down at the bottom? It's about that deep. Okay. It's about that deep. But it's, it's, yeah, plenty, plenty deep enough. So, uh, so this is a plastic molded part also. Yeah, th this is a much harder material than that's made out of. That's also a composite material as well. Okay. But it keeps it pretty light. 
you know, when you, if you, the, stuff the problem is, like, if like this, you can see why this out, these people, time, these Chinese, they made in. their body out of solid aluminum. Yeah. Solid aluminum. feel a lot heavier than it is. Yeah. And that's not even the same diameter as this. I mean, feel like that one is, you know? Yeah. Because if you tried to make, if you tried to make a hub that big out of aluminum, it would, I mean, we could, it would actually be easier for us to do it that way. Because these molded ones, one of the reasons they're special labor is Oh, this is molded? Oh, this is plastic? Yeah, this is all molded. This is the veins? We have a process where we have to take the veins, we have to custom size the veins, put them in a mold, heat it up, mold it, all this kind of stuff, take it out, clean it, trim it. But it'd be far easier just to have a piece of shop spin us out a bunch of aluminum pieces like this, but they would weigh, they'd weigh, too, they'd weigh a lot. I mean, it's real heavy. Especially when you get up into the large spiders, well, you'd end up with a four-pound spider. Yeah. You kill people, so... <laughs> so, uh, it's, uh, I didn't realize it was all there's a lot of uh, molded plastic parts. Yeah. it's a I'm an old it's a judicious use of these things. Yeah. A well a well constructed new tower with good optical set is hard to be. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you if it, if this is plastic? No, this is metal right here. Yeah, that's stainless steel. Then. That's that's stainless steel. Molded stainless steel. into the plastic. You can't go wrong. Yeah, it's embedded in there. That's that's how we do our heated ones. Yeah, that's what's going to say. The uh, the electrical connections are made inside there. You don't see them. Yeah. Yeah. And but the fact that these veins are not electrically in con contact with each other, that's the only way you can conduct the electricity through. If it was made like this one. Exposed, that's obviously all done, metal, yeah. but and you could you would be a dead short. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You'd have to put I mean, like copper really tape on it. Yeah, and you'd have to double here, the thickness right. of the vein. And you might, if you really want to do planetary all the time, so, you want to uh, burn vein, that's yeah. really the only time it's viable. Right. Otherwise, if you just want a good general purpose telescope. Okay. So what kind so of stainless do you use in there? Is that like a so three? three no, it's a three thousand series. Three three oh three hundred three oh eight three oh five. Well, we'll give you a holler sometime, and then we get around to one of these. Three oh. It's a pretty standard grade. Okay. I mean, frankly. If I was making a tele if I was making a spider just for myself, uh, I'd make them out of regular steel. Yeah. Regular steel is about ten percent stronger, stiffer, and stainless. I'm glad we missed it. And I would just make a spider for myself out of regular steel, and then just just keep it painted. <laughs> you know, just no, yeah, not let it roll. But when you're making something commercially. You have to account for everything. You have to account for some people are going to leave their scopes out in a rainstorm. Some people are going to ship them up and flake them up and everything. They're they're going to go through a lot of un, uncontrollable factors. And so you don't want you don't want spiders rusting. You know, yep. if a, some of your spider starts to rust and you get rust on the mirror, uh, that's going to be pretty embarrassing. You know? so, <laughs> so you you got to make it out. Of, I, I have to sacrifice a wee bit of strength just to get that stainless uh, protection. All right.